<laughs> I talk about this a lot here on this YouTube channel. Toddlers and how they're like these magical little unicorns who always keep us on our toes. One of the biggest ways they keep us on our toes with sleep is when they need to transition to their big kid bed. So let's talk about when we think that they should transition and how to do that successfully without impacting your overnight sleep. Hi, my name is Sarah and as the owner and one of the certified pediatric sleep experts at Yours and Baby Sleep, I work with toddlers all the time. I love it. They're like one of my favorite age groups and I help parents get their sleep on track by establishing really healthy sleep habits and supporting toddler behavior as it relates to nap time and bedtime. First things first, if your toddler is under the age of three, I don't want you to transition them out of their crib as long as you're able to help it. The only exception that I would say is acceptable is if your toddler is climbing out of the crib and it's becoming dangerous, right? Like they've really figured it out. You've put the mattress on the floor. You've created an uh, environment where they aren't able to get out of the crib, such as turning the crib with the high back facing out so that there's less leverage for them to get over the crib, right? Like you have tried all of the things to prevent them from climbing and they just won't stop climbing. <laughs> that would be an exception and I would say, all right, this video is for you. But if your toddler is over the age of three and you're starting to think, okay, maybe it is time, they're old enough, I need the crib for a younger sibling, they're getting too big for the crib, right? Like there may be multiple reasons why you are ready to make that move. I want you to wait till the age of three as much as you can. And a little background, why? Like what, why does three matter? Why is three a magical number? It just has to do with impulse control. Our three-year-olds still don't have great impulse control, but developmentally, there is a little more of a pause with our three year olds, four year olds, and five year olds. They can pause and they can think about their actions, even if it's for like three or four seconds. Whereas a two year old is not gonna pause and think. They don't have the ability to do that. That's just not developmentally appropriate. So if a two year old is in a big kid bed, whether it's a toddler bed or an actual twin or queen size bed, and they get up in the middle of the night, they're just gonna get up. They're gonna get up, they're gonna sit up, they're gonna go find mom and dad because now they have free range of the house, right? There is no control to say, oh, it's nighttime, I should be sleeping. They don't have that logic. Once our children turn three and as they get into the three and a half, four year old range, they're going to have a better chance at actually pausing and being like, oh, it's dark. That means I should still be sleeping. And they're not going to get out of bed and go search for mom and dad, hopefully. But if they do, we'll talk about how to prevent that. A big question that parents have for me often is, should I convert the crib to the toddler bed? Should I get a twin? Should I get a queen? You know, what should the furniture be? And obviously this is dependent on your budget and your space in your room. However, what I recommend is foregoing the toddler, but there's really no reason to use the toddler bed. Definitely something that makes us feel better because it's seemingly the same space, right? Like it's their same crib, it's just with the, the crib is down, right? Like the one side of the crib isn't there, you've taken it off. But at the end of the day, it's going to be harder for you on the nights where you may need to be in their room longer throughout the night if you're using a toddler bed. So what I'm thinking of is like in my own daughter's room, we have a twin size bed that has a trundle underneath so that on nights where she's really sick and I do need to spend the night with her, I am more comfortable because I pull out the trundle bed and that's where I'm going to sleep. It's also gonna be great for like years down the road if she ever has a sleepover with her cousins or with her friends, there's just more space. And then for my oldest daughter, we ended up getting her a queen size bed because she has more space in the room. But this is great because not only am I able to share a room with her without her coming into my room when she is sick or when she's having an off night, but it also provides us space for guests where we now have a room where guests can sleep when she when people are over and I need to have her out of the room and sharing a room with her sister. So I really would recommend going straight to like big people furniture and not worrying about you know purchasing an actual toddler bed at this point. I want it to be successful when you do make the transition to a big kid bed. The first thing to keep in mind is that we want to make sure that we are continuing to establish our boundaries. So it's really, really important, almost essential, that your child is falling asleep independently and sleeping throughout the night before we make this 
this move. Because keep in mind, if they're not falling asleep independently and they're not sleeping throughout the night, they were in a crib and they're contained, right? So you're going to their crib and helping them or assisting them or doing whatever, and then they're contained within the crib. As soon as that crib is gone, you're, that's it. <laughs> you don't have any way to contain them. With the exception of something that I also strongly recommend is a gate. Think about when you put your baby or your toddler in the crib, we created that boundary, that safe space for them to sleep. And then we like we closed the door behind them and we were fine, right? There, there was no second guessing to that. I want you to not second guess creating a boundary at the door and making the whole room like a big crib. There is nothing wrong with putting an extra tall gate that's anchored into the walls that they aren't able to operate in order to make sure that they understand this is your boundary. When the gate is closed, you are sleeping or even we'll keep the gate open. But if you have trouble controlling your body, mommy and daddy are going to have to keep you safe by closing the gate to keep you in your room. In addition to having the gate at the door, it's also really helpful to have some other visual cues to remind your child without our words and our prompts that it is time to sleep. So if you have a hatch, putting the hatch on red and using the term red means in bed, that can be a great resource as a visual cue so that they're not calling out for you. Ideally, they're looking at the clock and saying, oh, that means I'm supposed to be asleep and they're going to sleep or they're going back to sleep if they do wake up in the middle of the night. Alternatively, you can use a toddler okay to wake clock, one that has a face that's sleeping when you're supposed to be sleeping and awake when you're supposed to be awake the light turns green in the morning. These are all really great ways to support your child behaviorally, to help them understand what the expectation is because they can't tell time. They don't understand that when it's light out, it actually still is bedtime, right? If we're in the season when it's summer, they don't understand that when it's dark out in the morning, it actually is time to wake up and go to school when we're in the season that it's winter. So we need to give them extra support in order to help them. The most essential piece of all this is making sure you have a behavior plan yourself as to how you're going to manage any out of bed behavior or any refusal to lay down. This is what I help families with one-on-one -on -one all of the time. I have a specific toddler sleep program that talks about the science of toddler behavior, how to manage toddler behavior, how to support their behavior, both at nap times and at bedtimes when we are using a big kid bed, when we maybe we aren't using a gate because that's not aligned with our family's philosophy. So if you're looking for more information about how to specifically work one-on-one -on -one with me and you want specific personalized guidance, check out the caption below. I have a couple links to my website and a link to book a call for me to assess your sleep situation. It's a really great way to kind of avoid piecing together lots of free information and just get the job done in a really efficient amount of time with some expert eyes on your sleep situation. The last thing I want to cover is what do we expect? How long is it going to take to make this transition? I know this is vague and probably not the answer you're looking for, but it really depends on the child and it depends on their sleep foundation and their personality. Some kids are going to be really easygoing. They have a really great sleep foundation. It, there is no difference. It, they just make a smooth transition from the crib to the big kid bed. Uh, I don't work with families like that and neither one of my children were like that. Our transitions were much harder and took a lot longer. So if you're finding that you're struggling, what I want you to really look at is the behavior support, right? Just making sure that we have a really consistent plan as to how to manage when they are refusing to lay down, how to manage that impulse control and how to even manage our expectations. And I would say if it's taking longer than two or three weeks at this point, maybe you need to change the plan or again, reach out for extra help. If you're a toddler parent, let me know by liking the video and then telling me below in the comments. How old is your toddler? Are they in the crib? Are they in the big kid bed? Are you contemplating making the switch to big kid bed? And when are you doing that? I would love to help assist you a little bit and we can do that by interacting right here on YouTube. And then while you're at it, don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I am posting weekly YouTube videos, mostly on toddler and baby sleep content. And I think you'll find them really useful and I want you to be the first to know about them when they are published. As always, from my living room to yours, thank you so much for being here today and I can't wait to see you again next time.